Hello everyone and welcome to the Gunpla Network. I'm the Spicer and today's unboxing of 2012's high grade Calamity Gundam from Gundam Seed comes to you courtesy of those fine folks over at Canadian Gundam. Canadian Gundam is your one stop shop for all things Blammo and Gunpla here in North America. With a vast catalog that's restocked regularly and flat rate shipping to the US and Canada, if you're in North America, they've got you covered. When you're checking out that vast catalog, don't forget to use the promo code GUMPLA NETWORK to save yourself 10% off. Taking a look at the box, it's pretty standard fare for the remastered Gundam Seed line. So we have the Calamity Gundam with its name in the background and in front of it with its designation of GATX131. Some nice box art of the Calamity Gundam, but no space background or anything of that nature. The illustration crediting and then an explosion just kind of off to the side for some reason. Still, a pretty standard looking box, but you know, there's nothing wrong with that inherently. From my previous experience with the remastered Gundam scene line, I generally think I know what I'm going to be expecting in terms of articulation and gimmicks, but I've not built the Calamity Gundam, so I guess we'll have to take a look and see what those gimmicks are over on the side of the box. The side of the box is going to show us the color separation and the little decal sheet, as well as that weird remastered like hip joint thing before the hip joint for the stand connector. A couple of poses with the bazooka and the cannons, which really seems all this kit is going to come with, but that would be pretty lore accurate, so that's really not all that surprising. In terms of other gimmicks, that's really it. Um, there's no other weapons that the Calamity is going to come with. The bazooka does look pretty nice. It uh, does look to have a couple of different pieces on there, so maybe they'll be color separated. And it's not like just the handle and two big pieces of plastic, but I'm not going to hold my breath too much. It's possibly painted up because it's the advertisement on the side of the box. The cannons over the shoulders, they look fine. I imagine once again, they're probably not going to look like that out of box because there's a fairly decent amount of color between the gray, the kind of teal, blue, green, and the red, and then the vents being kind of a red orangey as well. And then you have, of course, the shield with its two cannons, and that might actually save maybe some of the orange be color accurate in plastic with no color correcting stickers, but we'll take a look at those when we bust the box open. The other side of the box is pretty bare, just advertising the HD remaster project for Gundam Seed and the RO6 in the Gen and the RO7 in the CQ as its predecessors in the remastered Seed line. Then you get all the standard Bandai fare of warnings and things of that nature. Cracking the box open to take a look at the plastic and we'll start with the A plate here. And as tradition, it does have several different colors on it. You've got the bazooka, which does seem to mostly be one piece. It might have a separate piece for the tip of the barrel, but it does look like just two big, or I guess three big chunks of plastic. Then you have the gray for the body and the cannons and the joints. The yellowish color for all the accents does look like for the chest vents, all the black insides either going to need to be painted or possibly a sticker. I guess we'll find out in a minute. And then the very dark burgundy color for the jewel pretty standard looking plate, nothing really special to write home about, but it is all kind of right there. In terms of the B plates, B1 and B2, they look like one single plate, but they are two separate ones that just look like they were cut down the middle. They make up almost all of the teal on this, and uh, yeah, <laughs> it is exactly what it is. There's some decent looking surface detailing for a kit that's from 2012. Uh, and this teal color looks pretty nice. The C plate is going to make up the kind of dark gray black portions of the kit. And these are really looking mostly not super detailed. Uh, most of them look like they're probably going to be layered under other things. So not too crazy. But uh, this is definitely not going to have parts poking through the yellow that we saw in the A plate for the chest vents. We also get the PC pieces for all the joints and then the weird hip connector thing or I guess bottom of the torso connector for the stand uh, adapter. Way back with these, if you're not familiar with them, instead of having the adapter be a PC piece in the hips, this actually was something you had to take the top of the torso off, which was usually just a peg, so it wasn't that big a deal. Put this on it, close it back up, and then you would have the peg adapter just behind the back skirt. Uh, 
it's kind of weird, but it works. I've had it on a couple of other suits, and it seems to work fine. Just a weird oddity from 2012. In terms of the stickers, it looks like we have the very nice to see um, stickers as far as decals go with all the Omni logos and then the X series stuff as well as the Archangel and all that, which is weird because I don't remember it being on the Archangel at any point, but whatever, it's uh, maybe it's Archangel class, but because it was on the Dominion, I don't know exactly why that's there, but whatever, it's a cool sticker. I'm glad to have it. Wish more high grades would have decals like this. Unfortunately, they don't. Now, as far as the foil stickers, we have the eyes, of course. We have the lens for the bazooka, another camera lens, which I'm assuming is the top of the head, and then the big cannon in the chest, and I'm interested to see how this fits as this is a concave surface, so it's going to have to go around a couple of different bins, and it doesn't look like it's cut, so we'll see how well that works. But not too bad in terms of color correcting stickers, so either most everything is color accurate or they just kind of left it out and you're kind of left to your own devices. I'll see once I get it all put together. In terms of the manual, though, we get a pretty standard fare for this remastered line. You get the same box art you had on the front. You have all of the relevant information there, RO8, GATX131 Calamity Gundam, and... Yeah, that's there's not too much home to write about there. Then uh, on the back, you'll see the color guide if you do decide to paint it, the details for the weird hip joint thing I was talking about a second ago, and some decent front and back shots of the kit. Now in terms of the centerfold, you have a nice set of color, color splashed pages here with the kind of same poses we've seen on the rest of the box, but you get them a little bit bigger here as well. So you have the artwork over on the right-hand side that is it in action. So it's either been photoshopped into something or someone had like an elaborate set set up for this product picture. You have it down on its knees in a kneeling kind of configuration. I doubt that's going to be that easy to pull off, but we'll see, I guess, once I get it built. You have the cannons on the shields that lift up. Then you have the bazooka in it, kind of an awkward pose, but... That's kind of exactly what you would expect for a big bulky kit like this. Overall, I'm actually kind of excited. As, as much as the Seed remaster line is old, I do really enjoy these kits just because they're very simple, they're very quick to put together, and generally they're very serviceable. Sure, they're not going to be the most articulate thing, they're not the Moon Gundam, they're not real grades, they're not modern high grades, they're not IBO kits, they're not anything crazy. But there is some fun in that simplicity and a little bit of excitement in terms of if you do want to paint this. I've done that to pretty much all of my Seed Remastered kits. The Jin, the CQ, the Savior. I'm sure there's probably another one up there that I'm just not seeing. But th those are pretty easy to paint. Most everything's color accurate and it doesn't take a lot of work. So we'll see once I get it all put together how it looks. But I'm actually kind of excited to... Just enjoy a build here and not worry too much about complexities and things of that nature. Anyway, those are my thoughts on this unboxing. If you do have questions, let me know in the comments down below. I'll do my best to answer them. And of course, friends, please stay safe and keep on building.